This is the BQ Huracan, a 3D printer that shares the same features of many Ender 3 style printers on the market right now with a twist. It's running Clipper right out of the box. Genius or ridiculous? We'll discuss it all in this detailed review here on Maker's Muse. Let's get started. This isn't the first 3D printer I've reviewed from BQ here on the channel. I checked out the BQ BX two years back, and although it had some teething issues being a pre-production unit, I really liked its innovative geared direct drive extruder and bold choice of a huge Raspberry Pi ready LCD interface. So when they reached out about this machine, which runs Clipper from the factory, I had to take a look. But what is Clipper? And how does it set this 3D printer apart from the rest? Well, Clipper is a 3D printer firmware like Marlin. However, instead of being installed in its entirety onto an Arduino like Marlin, Clipper is installed onto a much more powerful computer such as a Raspberry Pi or even your desktop, which is then used to control the printer. Because Clipper runs on much more powerful hardware than your regular 3D printer firmware, it can do a lot more advanced things if you have the energy to fully explore, learn and experiment with its feature list that is. The Huracan runs Big Tree Tech's all-in-one solution to using Clipper with a 3D printer. Their Manta M4P board loaded with a TMC2209 silent stepper drivers and CB1 board, which is their take on a Raspberry Pi style computer handling the operating system and wireless connectivity. Up front, there's the old familiar LCD with click wheel and micro SD card slot, but wait, because that micro SD card runs the entire operating system. Do not, under any circumstances, remove this SD card while the printer is on because it'll corrupt it and you'll have to reinstall the entire operating system all over again. Ask me how I know. The Huracan goes together much like any other i3 style printer kit on the market made from V-slot extrusion. It comes well packaged in dense black foam. And yes, the famous BQ duck is included as well. Why do they include a duck? Well, I don't know, but if yours is missing, I'd definitely complain. The printer comprises of the Y-axis base, the upright with Z-axis and the X-axis gantry, which all need to be slid together and bolted up. It comes with a single sheet start guide, which is pretty garbage, but the PDF manual is much better and I've linked it in the description below. This machine only has one Z-axis motor, which is questionable at its price point. What's even stranger is that you need to unbolt it in order to slide the gantry into place. Still, the process of adding it back on with a lead screw and securing it to the base with four bolts is pretty straightforward, if a little bit awkward. The LCD is attached into place with two screws as of the spool holder. And finally, you can thread the PTFE tube from the extruder right down into the hot end. I've seen a lot of strange looking extruders lately, like the planetary gear direct drive unit on the Sovel SV06 and the mini direct drive unit on the BX, which was really neat. So I was pretty excited to see what BQ went with here. And it's this dual wheel geared assembly, which pushes filament through the PTFE tube down into the hot end. I'll admit it's pretty disappointing. I would have loved to see the H2 extruder from the BQ BX here again, but maybe they did it this way to keep the moving mass down on the printer head so it can print crazy fast, right? <laughs> sure. In terms of print volume and design, the Huracan is your standard i3 style bed slinger. It's got a print volume of 220 by 220 by 270 on the Z, which is a little bit more than the norm. It has a removable magnetic print bed, which is nice, and a solid design with injection molded parts framing the aluminium V slot. Decent, but not too different to any other Ender 3 style printer out there. However, this is not an Ender 3 because remember, it runs Clipper. So how's that experience? When you set up your printer, you need to give it your Wi-Fi details by adding them to the system config file found on the micro SD card, and it'll be assigned an IP address on your network. From there, all you need to do is type that address into any browser on any device logged into the same network, and bam, this is what the fuss is all about. Think of this window as the control room for your 3D printer. While you can do a lot of functions using the LCD and click wheel, this interface is absolutely next level. From here, you can wirelessly send G-code files, start prints, and monitor all of them as well as take advantage of the huge range of functionality within Clipper, which if you're a Clipper neophyte like myself, will take some learning. Thankfully though, there is a great wiki and tons of excellent tutorials from other great creators like Nero3D to get you up and running. And you, once you have, you'll wonder how you lived without it. And then you might wonder, why is it in this 3D printer? You see from the factory, this 3D printer has Clipper, sure but it's not at all leveraged or even tuned properly, at least in my opinion. The demo files all print okay. There's this oversized Benchy, I don't know why they scaled it, which prints well enough, but it didn't wow me. 
Unfortunately, it seems that one of the V-rollers has a very prominent flat spot, which was translating into the print, as you can see clearly with this XYZ test cube. So correct tension and maintenance of V-rollers is just part of the experience when working with these printers. So I had to go at correctly tensioning them and the problem mostly went away. However, when I started printing more and more complex test models like my clearance castle, I was disappointed to discover that the port colors is completely fused in place. So what's going on? Well, I printed this tiny arrow to demonstrate the issue. On all of these prints, when there's a hard, sharp edge, it's bulging quite a lot. You actually see it really clearly on this print that holds the optional accelerometer board. And these bulging corners destroy print accuracy. That's because there's too much filament coming out at a given time, the printer's not controlling it enough with this Bowden style setup. And look, if you want to just print cute little display models and call it a day, then fine. But when I test machines, I want to see how accurately they can print so they can be used to reliably reproduce my designs. Thankfully, we can do something about it. In order to fix these prints, I spent a whole day going down the clipper rabbit hole. I measured and corrected for resonances using the optional accelerometer board, which is definitely worth picking up. And I performed a pressure advanced test routine to figure out how best to eliminate the poor quality walls and bulging corners. This test runs a range of different values from the bottom to the top and allows you to pick from the best looking ones and then plug those results into the config file. And the results speak for themselves. Again, I'm a newbie to Clipper, but this number seems to work well with the Bowden Extruder setup. And after all these tweaks and after making my own custom Prusa Slicer profile, I did start to get some really decent prints. So here are some of my favorites. So I printed a ton of models and I tweaked a lot along the way as well. But these are just some of the best models that I created after doing my tweaks. This is the famous owl model and it's printed in great PLA plus and it's looking really, really good. There is some slight layer inconsistencies for the vertical direction, I would say, but nothing too severe. I was mostly able to get rid of those Z banding issues from the roller that did have a divot in it. But the ears are really clean as well and the beak's very nice, which is very difficult to do on this model. And that just shows that the cooling on the Huracan is much better than the SV06 that I tested recently from Soval. Moving on to the famous Gator Anderson cat. This is actually a 3D scan that's been cleaned up from a actual Egyptian artifact. And I love to use this test model because it's really hard to print those legs in place. You need a little bit of support for the head and a leg likes to fall off. But this actually turned out really, really well. And that back is again, very, very clean and smooth. And the markings on the cat's chest are very, very nice as well. It's quite hard to make them clear. And there's no stringing between the ears as well, which means that even though it's Bowden, it has been tuned in well enough to actually remove stringing almost entirely. But now moving on to my new favorite model. This is the Fox Machina from Photos Mint. And this might be my new replacement for the Gaia Anderson Cat because it's very similar in terms of how it prints, but it's a lot more complex. There's so much texture going on. The model is very, very large with millions of triangles and it actually printed fantastically. I'm really stoked with this. So the only thing I would say that could be better is the tip of the tail is a little bit uh, droopy, but the overhang there is quite severe and the cooling otherwise on the rest of the model is very sufficient. The ears again are very, very clean. No stringing, no blobbing, nothing like that. This is after I did all my pressure advanced tests and uh, tweaks as well. And it really does seem to make a significant difference in the quality of the print. And speaking of those pressure advanced tests, I did need to do them to get my clearance castle to complete successfully. And think about pressure advanced, and I do agree. I talked to the team over at BQ it's something that you need to tweak for each material. And I did say that they don't include it into the default settings is because it needs to be tweaked per material. But because it's such a big Bowden tube, I would have set some low arbitrary number just to start with to help instead of not having it at all. Either way, I did end up using that number I mentioned, 0.68, and it did let me complete the clearance castle with my new settings and Prusa Slicer very, very well. The drawbridge goes down, the port colors can move, and the tower can unscrew that from the labyrinth maze. And the whole thing comes apart and it's very, very clean indeed. And finally, something very pretty and artistic. I love this glitch vase that's printed in vase mode and it has these lovely facets that catch the light at different angles. And this printed with no issues at all in this gorgeous pink polyalchemy PLA, which sadly you can't get anymore, but I do have some left and I did decide to use it to make this lovely vase. And again, fantastic print, no evidence of ghosting or anything like that. Just a slight impact from the motor's stepping, but it's very, very minor in this print. And yeah, overall, very, very stoked with these models, but just wish it didn't take so long to get to this point. So should you get the BQ Huracan? Hmm. I am blown away by the power of Clipper and its ease of use sending files to the machine and monitoring it from a distance, as well as the control you have over parameters. I do wish I checked it out sooner because it really does have an effect on print quality, but only if you use it properly and it is quite a steep learning curve for a newbie into 3D printing. However, I am unimpressed by the lack of tuning and support 
BQ has provided with this machine to take advantage of Clipper. As it stands right now, months after this printer was released, the only printing profile BQ has on offer for this printer is a profile in Cura for an entirely different printer, the BQ B1. It works, but it's painfully slow and doesn't really leverage any of the benefits of running Clipper in the first place. So like I said, I ended up making my own custom profile in Prusa Slicer based off the Creality Ender 3, but it's much faster and has all the external acceleration control disabled because Clipper doesn't understand those commands anyway. And I'm really happy with the results. By the way, if you'd like to learn how to tweak your slicer settings for the best possible results, then you should definitely check out my brand new ebook, The Ultimate Book of 3D Printing Tips and Tricks. It has a slice better section that I go into detail on how to make your prints faster, look better, and use less material, as well as a ton more info to level up your printing experience. There's a link in the description below. So yeah, this printer can go pretty quick if it's tuned right, but it should have been tuned right from the factory. And there are other small decisions that make me question how much testing was done as well. Such so as a decision to paint the removable print bed with these white lines, which come off with a 3D print as soon as you print over them. It has 16 point bed level compensation using a BL touch style probe, which is nice and it works pretty well, but the printer also has four spring-loaded manual adjustment points. So you're meant to what? Level it manually and then mesh bed level? And you can't adjust nozzle height manually. It has to be done using a Z offset. So again, why? To me, the BQ Huracan is like getting a 20-year-old Toyota Echo and installing a high-end engine management system. Sure, that would allow me to use my laptop to accurately read temperatures and fuel pressures and change fuel air mixtures and ignition timing on the fly. But at the end of the day, it's still a potato car that won't see any real benefit from the added functionality. This is basically an Ender 3 with one of the most powerful firmware solutions on the market right now. As a result, there are some very obvious limitations. Clipper is ideal for very well built and very fast 3D printers with high flow hot ends, but in this implementation, it doesn't even get to stretch its legs before it hits the limits of the hardware. I have no clue why BQ didn't do something similar with the BQ BX instead, which was a far superior 3D printer in my opinion. I reckon if you wanna dive into Clipper as a learning experience, then just buy their own control board with the four stepper drivers for about 75 bucks US, and stick it into anything you have, like an old Ender 3 or Prusa Mark 3 or similar. It's a very good control board and it's a very accessible way to try Clipper. But with the Huracan, in my opinion, I just don't think it's a very good fit. However, the Huracan is, at least to my knowledge, the cheapest 3D printer on the market with Clipper already installed from factory and ready to go. So maybe it's the right choice for you. I'll link my Clipper config tweaks and custom Prusa Slicer profile in the description below if you happen to pick one up so you can avoid the teething problems that I ran into and pump out some decent prints. If you'd like to learn more about the BQ Huracan, then you can find links in the description below. And a big thanks to BQ for sending across this machine for purpose of review. I do hope that they take my feedback on board and make their next Clipper-based 3D printer the best it can be. All reviews here on Makers Muse are my own opinion and no money has changed hands. If you found this video useful, then maybe consider subscribing and checking out this video. <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. Bye.